the game to see the boxing boys. Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go live. Peace. Thing with boxing is it's entertainment. This is the entertainment business, and these are two guys that entertain. Um, Sean Porter's come out on the short end of the stick in a couple of fights, and frankly, those fights could have been scored maybe a little bit differently. Clearly, one of them could have been. Um, and they were both sensational fights. The guy right next to me to the left, I don't think he gets enough respect. This is a guy that just keeps on winning. Every time he gets out there, he wins, and people wonder, how's he doing it? Because he doesn't do X, Y, and Z great. He's a great fighter. You don't have to do one thing great. You have to be able to get out there and compete and entertain people. So on September 8th at the Barclay Center, um, Showtime Championship Boxing presented by PBC, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, the WBC World Welterweight Championship. Uh, these guys deserve that opportunity. The winner of this fight deserves to have a belt. And the guy that has that belt is gonna get one of the biggest fights in the world thereafter. They know what the stakes are, the two professionals. You know, they're both trained by their dads. Uh, Danny's trained by Angel Garcia. Uh, Kenny Porter trains. And they're, they're, by the way, these are situations where the father-son relationship works in the corner. Um, these are two guys that know how to fight, and they're gonna throw down, and they're gonna entertain you. So people who love boxing, get your tickets now. You can get them at the box office at the Barclays Center. You can get them at Barclays Center. Um, dot com, Ticketmaster.com or by calling 1-800-745-3000. There wouldn't be Brooklyn boxing, there wouldn't be the consistency of programming um, that there is in the Barclays Center as a venue if not for the man I'm about to bring up. He runs a show there, he loves the sport, and he has done amazing things for the sport of boxing in New York City and in Brooklyn. My friend Brett Dormark. Thanks, Lou, and good morning slash good afternoon, everyone. As Lou said, September 8th should be terrific. Um, I'm personally looking forward to it. It adds to our resume at Brooklyn Boxing. Um, it comes almost at the six-year mark, the anniversary of, of Barclay Center, um, so we're thrilled. Um, this is a fight, as Lou said, that everyone's been waiting for, and, and I'm right there you know, with, with the consensus. Uh, both fighters are veterans in our ring. Uh, in fact, uh, this is Danny's seventh fight uh, in Brooklyn, Sean's fifth. And in the process, both have built up a, a sizable fan base uh, in Brooklyn. Lou said that tickets are on sale, and our pre-sale in the, just the first few days have been terrific, far exceeding any other fight that they've participated in. So we're looking forward to a sellout crowd on September 8th, and I hope all of you will be joining us. Um, when you think about Danny and what he's done at Barclay Center, um, he opened the building for Brooklyn Boxing almost six years ago um, and helped really put Brooklyn Boxing on the map. So Danny, I thank you for that and thank you for keep coming back. Um, it's been a year since you fought in our ring, so the fans are certainly looking forward to welcoming you back to the borough. Um, Sean, your last three fights have been in Brooklyn, um, so we're thrilled that you're back. Um, and I think you and your dad, when you're not in the ring, you've been sitting ringside probably for every fight uh, in Brooklyn. So welcome back. Thrilled to have you and your, your family. And uh, again, excited about September 8th. September 8th, it's not just the main event, but we'll be hearing over the course of the next couple of weeks, you know, how loaded this card is from top to bottom. And I think it's indicative of the type of fights we've been hosting in Brooklyn uh, since we got started. Uh, this year alone, We've had four major fight nights. We have featured some of the top fighters in the sport with Deontay Wilder, Errol Spence, the Charlo Twins, Gervonta Davis, and many, many more. So uh, we're so thankful to be hosting the, the boxing industry time and time again in Brooklyn. And uh, I think our track record speaks for itself as being really the top venue in the country for, for boxing. In fact, I'm gonna be making an announcement in the coming weeks about our future plans when it comes to boxing in Brooklyn. As many of you know, the Islanders are making their way back to Long Island. They'll be, they'll be playing half of their games there this year and hopefully in 1920, all of their games. Um, in 2019, I think it's gonna be fair to say that we will have two major sports franchises in the building 
uh, the Brooklyn Nets, obviously, and Brooklyn Boxing, and more to come on that. But we are as committed as ever to bring the best of the best to Brooklyn uh, and doing it uh, consistently throughout the year. Um, I want to thank, obviously, the PBC for their continued support, Lou DeBell and his incredible team, uh, Steven Espinoza and Showtime Championship Boxing. Without you, we wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be, you know, really, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the destination for boxing in America. I look forward to seeing everyone on the 8th. It should be a spectacular night, and thank you for your considered support. Uh, I want to acknowledge quickly our sponsors, Corona Extra, Casanova Tequila, and I want to acknowledge my co-promoter on this event, TGB Promotions. Um, Showtime Boxing has become the industry uh, leader in premium cable boxing in the United States, one of the television leaders of boxing in the world. Um, there is no uh, comparison right now on premium cable in this country. And uh, it's my pleasure to bring up a man largely responsible for that, Stephen Espinosa. Thanks, Lou. Uh, as someone who's a fan and uh, uh, a supporter of the sport, uh, I think personally I'd like to thank you, both of these guys, uh, both Brett and Lou. Um, if you care about boxing, you care about boxing on the East Coast in New York, um, you have to recognize that we owe a debt to both of them and their support. Um, Brett over the last six years and, and Lou for a couple decades um, and, and, and longer. And uh, certainly New York City boxing would not be where it is without these two guys right here. Uh, Garcia Porter will be the 12th Showtime Championship Boxing event of the year. That's 12 championship level events on Showtime. That's just through September. Add in Showbox and the other Showtime boxing events and we've done 24 live boxing telecasts this year. Uh, that's more high quality boxing events than any other network than any other platform. And it's not just quantity, uh, it's, it's high quality. Garcia Porter will be the eighth matchup this year on Showtime where a top five fighter is taking on another top five fighter. Again, eight times on Showtime this year alone, top five versus top five. And in this top five, we've got Danny Garcia and Sean Porter with two of the strongest resumes, not just in the welterweight division, but in the sport overall. Danny Garcia, 34 and one. And with a difference in scoring in one round in just one card, uh, he's undefeated. That's how close the Thurman fight was. It was decided by one round on one card. And if that goes the other way, that goes in Danny's fighter, we're talking about an undefeated fighter. Danny won his first title in 2012. Of his last 15 fights, 12 have been against current or former world champions. 12 fights against current or former world champions. Includes Keith Thurman, Robert Guerrero, Pauli Malignaggi, Lamont Peterson, Lucas Matisse, Amir Khan, and more. There's no question Danny's got one of the strongest resumes in the sport. And as, as Lou mentioned, I don't think he gets credit for it, and I think it's time that he does. Sean Porter, similar background, same age, won his first title in 2013. Of his last 11 fights, eight have been against current or former world champions. His resume includes Keith Thurman, Andre Berto, Adrian Broner, Kel Brook, Pauli Malignaggi, Devin Alexander. Uh, between the two of them, they've appeared on Showtime and CBS a combined 20 times. Lots of fighters talk about the best fighting the best. Not all of them actually do it. Danny and Sean are actually doing it. And lots of networks talk about the best fighting the best, but there's really only one network here that's doing it, and that's Showtime. The Shots. best fighters, the biggest, most meaningful fights, the most exciting events, that's what we've been doing, and with the help of fighters like Danny and Sean, that's what we're gonna continue to do it. Thank you. We're gonna let these guys answer some questions. And um, just before we do, I I'm a fan before I'm a promoter. I've been a fan of the sport since I was a kid. And you know, my grandfather turned me on to the sport when I was six years old. And he came over from Italy and there wasn't soccer back then on, on TV, so it was like boxing and, and that's what I grew up on. This is a great fight. You know, I, as a fan, this is a great fight. And support this kind of fight. 
there are good fights and matchups between champions and matchups between undefeated guys, and you can still walk in and be bored to tears. On September 8th, that room's going to be electric. You're not going to be bored. You're going to be on the edge of your seat because this is going to be some great shit. And be there. Get your tickets now. Uh, Jim Gray, this guy knows how to ask the right questions. He knows how to ask the hard questions. That's why he's at the Hall of Fame, and I turn it over to Jim Gray. We're looking forward to September 8th over at the Barclays Center. Had the honor and privilege to uh, have broadcast many of these guys' fights. Um, looking forward to it, so let's just get going. Um, this kind of started after the Brandon Rios fight. Uh, maybe it's been going on for longer in your guys' mind. I've never uh, publicly uh, apologized to you, you know, so my apologies for Thank you very stepping much. On, stepping on the, on, the, on the scene like that, you don't gotta apologize to him, dude. Yeah, you do. A public display deserves a public apology, and I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I don't apologize to him. I apologize to the wrong person. No, he interrupted my interview, but he, he owes you an apology as well. <laughs> Here we go already. <laughs> Where we left off. Um, Danny, it was made obvious to you that night that this was the fight that the Porters, Kenny, and Sean would like to have, and now you have this fight. Um, were you looking forward to it as much as seemingly they were? You know, first of all, I want to thank Showtime, Al Heyman, Team Garcia, thank the media for coming out because, you know, as much as you could be a pain in the ass, we need y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm excited for this fight. Um, I'm excited because I'm a world champion, level fighter, and this gives me the opportunity to be back on the mountaintop where I've been at for so long, so it doesn't matter who would have been. I'm just excited to be fighting at the Barclays Center and fight for the welterweight title. Sean, why, why was this fight with Danny so important to you and why have you made that so obvious in the past several months? Yeah, I think for a long time, um, just watching him do what he does and, you know, time after time saying, you know, you can't do that to me, you know, I, 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 this is what I would do to you, you know. And I think it just became the kind of stir up to the point where I really wanted to fight uh, Danny Garcia here and, you know, at his last fight, I saw an opportunity to really get in front of everyone and, you know, make that be known uh, worldwide. And uh, I, hopefully I think that that's why we're here right now. So, you know, for me, um, my career has not been based upon what I want. So for me to finally get an opportunity to, to have what I want, I'm, I'm thriving right now. Why hasn't it been based on what you want? Uh, well, that's how it goes, you know, for some fighters. Some fighters have to, to wait to find out, you know, what the division is gonna do and, you know, I guess, you know, take what's left or, you know, take what's given to them. Like, I would say, you know, for a majority of my career, I haven't exactly said, I wanna fight this guy and that's the guy that I'm gonna fight. I've, I've more so been told, you know, hey, this is what we got for you. Uh, let's go for it, make the best of it. And that's what I've done to this point, you know? So like I said, um, to finally uh, make my voice heard and, and, and have that accepted, uh, it just, you know, fills me up. I'm excited about it. Danny, you've obviously moved on in your career, but I'm just wondering as you look back, and, and Steven Espinoza uh, at Showtime uh, alluded to it, one card, one fight, one night. Are you haunted? And does that bother you? And do you think more about that loss than you have, perhaps, your, your titles and your championships? You know what? Um, it, it hurt me for a little bit. It hurt me for a little while because I felt like I closed the fight strong, the 11 to 12 round, and that was the ju the one judge didn't give me the 11 to 12 round, and that's everyone in the world seen those ju those those rounds were mine. So when I seen that, it hurt me a little bit. But at, at the end of the day, um, you know, I feel motivated again. You know, I feel mo I feel more motivated after that fight than before that fight. Why? What's motivating you? I don't know, it's just something different, you know. I just feel like going there and have fun, you know. It is what it is. Um, I have no pressure on my back. I'm just gonna come to fight and do what I do best. Like I said before, I'm coming to fight. I'm not, I'm, you, I mean, we could dance with the stars, NBC, we could do that, but I'm coming to fight. And when I say that, I mean. Well, he certainly comes to fight, and, and he makes the fights wild, and he makes them ugly. How, how do you prepare for something like I'm that? I'm coming to fight. 
I'm well, I understand that, but yeah. I mean, we get that. I don't really don't understand how I'm just gonna. If you want to stand in the middle of the ring to fight? <laughs> that's what I do. I'm Will that fight. serve you best? It, whatever. Yes. Whatever. I, I'm stronger than him. I got I got bigger punching power than him. I'm faster than him. I'm a better all-around fighter than him. Well, certainly, uh, Sean. Um, we, you're, you've you've been known to make these fights, you know, wild, crazy, uh, difficult to prepare for, and I assume, or should we assume, that's the same thing you'll do? Uh, for sure. Uh, I'm, Why will it be I'm affected? A, I'm a very difficult fighter to prepare for, for a lot of reasons. Um, you never know what you're gonna get with me. You know, like he said before, you know, we can do Dancing with the Stars. I'm a better dancer than he is. Simple as that. You ain't never seen me dance. I can, I can. <laughs> I seen you do the robot. Oh. <laughs> That's all you do. I seen you play football. Yeah. And you see me with the best do it. <laughs> So that's what it is. But that, but that's what it is. I've been an underdog. You ever want to? When I'm in the ring, have you ever been an underdog? When I'm in the ring, have you ever been an underdog and won a fight? Yes, most definitely. All my fights, I'm the underdog in every fight. You are underdog in every fight. Yeah. They pick the perfect fight. I'm the underdog tonight. I'm, I'm the underdog on the eight. You already put yourself the underdog. He already came to lose. I'm, I'm the underdog on the eight because that's what I'm used to. That's all I know. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. That's all I know. I thought you were from Vegas. I live in Vegas. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. You know where you I'm you, from. You say you're from Vegas. You know where I'm from. You know what I'm in your do. backyard. <laughs> it was in my backyard. That's you, not your backyard. You heard me clearly. That's not your backyard. You and you heard me clearly. I, I know where you're from. I know where you're from. Exactly. I know where you're from. You know and, where I'm and, from. And so and you and, and so, I, I claim Philly. I read Philly everywhere I go. I know you do. I know you do. You ain't been nowhere else. <laughs> you ain't been nowhere else. Mansion in Miami, baby. You ain't been nowhere else. I got a you went to Puerto Rico, they said go home. <laughs> nah, Puerto Rico. Oh, went to Puerto Rico, they said go home. You could probably walk Wait through. a minute, I thought you, you was from bro, Philly. You walked through Ohio, nobody gonna know you. I thought you was from I Philly. I walked through Ohio and people know me more than you. Uh, that's n impossible. It, hey, folks, hold on a impossible. second here. I, I bet you <laughs> it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter where anybody's from. Put your okay. purse on the line. Well, let's establish. Put your purse on the line. I hold bet on, you no my purse versus your purse. No point. No point. See, here's the thing, people. Just like at his fight. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But just like, just like the night of the fight, I'm more intelligent than this man is. I jump in the ring and I say I want to fight you. He say I'll, I'll come to your gym and spar you tomorrow. That's not intelligent. That's not smart. Why not? You, you sitting up here right now, and and you sitting up here right now. Are you streaming the fight at free? I stream the fight for free. Yeah, I offered you to do the same because something made sense that night. That don't. This don't make sense. What we doing right now makes sense. What no, you, what, money don't mean nothing what, to me. I when got I got that. the ring and I barked at you, that made sense. And then when you bark back and say, I spar you, that did not make sense. Let me ask so you a question. Here right now. Go Hold ahead. on. Hold right on. All right. This guy Danny, sounds dumb. Danny, prior to the end of the Rios fight, did you guys like each other? I don't know the guy. I don't know him personally. I don't know him either. <laughs> I don't have none of you dislike him personally. Him? Okay, personally. But we talking boxing, and he disrespected me. I never disrespected him. In what way? He came in the ring and that's okay. this is my time. Alright, so we're back to that. I never walked in the ring on him. I would never do that. You never walked in I, I would never do that. Well now we got Angel. We also have Kenny. So let's how do you hear your dad when he's throwing out that barrage throughout the entire round? Do you hear that voice? Do you ignore that voice? How do you how how do you deal with that? Of course my you know, my dad heard his voice for a long time, so you, you know, pick it up over all of it. Yeah, I heard all kind of voices with him. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we, me and pops are different, man. Like a lot of people have father or son relationships. Like me and my dad, we go out together. You know, we travel the world together. You know, we go to the strip club together. You know what I mean? So we throw money together. <laughs> but you know, we 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 more friends than anything. You know, we come from the bottom. We come we come from nothing. So we have a friendship. It's just not all about boxing. You know what I mean, we we really enjoying the moment, and we're hungry, and we want more. And obviously, Sean, Kenny, your father, very important uh, in your corner as well. Um, explain the dynamic that you have. A lot the same, you know. Uh, for him and I, um, I think, in a, a little different than these two right here. For us, boxing is our way of life. This is what he's grown me into. What I've always done. So. For us, the, the night of the fight is like 
that's like Christmas time for us. It's like it's like another birthday or a big celebration. It's the, it, that's the time that we come to, together the most, and we make the best of every opportunity. And you know that's why I'm here right now. You know um, Brooklyn doesn't like me because of my hair or the way I dress or you know that I don't wear jewelry or that I don't cuss or you know things of that of that nature. They, they Brooklyn likes me because I come to fight and I entertain. And a big portion of that comes from this man over here. He's giving me all the tools that I need to become the best boxer that I could be, the best entertainer in this business that I could be. Final thought that I would have is, is obviously this is a huge fight for both of you. Where do you feel, should you be victorious in this fight to set you up? Does this set you up to wait for Keith Thurman to heal and come back or, or Errol Spence? Or where do you think this puts you, should you be victorious? You know, at the end of the day, my mindset, I really want to win this fight, you know, so I'm not even looking past the fight. So I got, I got to go September 8th and I got, to, I got to grab this title. And then after the fight, you can ask me to fight whoever. And like I always do, I never turn down one opponent in my career. Never turn down one guy in my career. You can ask any of my managers, anybody ever. Golden Boy, you guys, Golden Boy, because they, they brought me up. Um, you guys, I'll him, you guys, anybody. I never turn down one opponent, so I, I'm a fighter, that's what I do. Sean, should you be victorious? Where do you think that places you? That belt, that's all I want. That's all I want, I want the WBC title. And I said for a long time, it didn't matter who I had to go through to get it. I really wanted it. Um, and it just, it adds, you know, puts more ice on the cake that it happens to be this gentleman right here next to me because you know him being one of the top fighters in, in my division for a long time now you know to be able to win this belt against someone like this guy just kind of solidifies me and what i've been trying to do for a very long time um and the sky's the limit we all know that when you got a belt it, it, everything else comes to you you know um as you saw i had to go i had to go to this man after his fight to, to try to make this fight happen you know i've done some things on social media to try to make this fight happen i win the belt and everything else comes to me we look forward to September 8th. This is just a personal question as we finish here. How do you keep those shoes clean? <laughs> I don't know. They just, they just don't wear them out in public walk, very much. I, I don't walk on, I walk on water. I don't walk on dirt. <laughs> you walk on water, you wouldn't be entering the ring on right. September 8th. Gentlemen, we look forward to it. It'll be on Showtime, 9 p.m. September 8th, Barclays Center. Get your tickets. We appreciate it. We look forward to a great time. Thank you. Two great time. We're going to do a photo now, uh, and then uh, the fighters will be available to talk to you, I guess, individually. Thanks, Jim. Hey, Kelly, you're working. Sit down, guys. Sit down. We're over here. Thank you, Jim. Good job. Right here. Is that good? Yeah. Pass this on a little closer. You guys got it? Oh, you guys got it? Have it? You guys look in the back for me real quick at the TVs, please. Are you going to have them come down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Okay, let's get one. You guys both hold in a glove up, please. Let's go right down here to the... Photo down here, please. And back into the TV. A lot of faithful. Down yeah, here. Or faithful. Kelly, we get Lou in as well. Actually, hang on. Alright, you want to do a yeah. Let's do it. Oh, Steve, you know. We'll go ahead, jump in there. Uh, yeah, we'll get the trainers up. Angel and Kenny, can you come on up? Angel, come on up. All right, thanks, fellas. Let's get one with your trainers now. Let's move over this way a little bit so Angel can get you. Right there. There you go, what else? Yeah, okay, we'll do that in a minute. I'm gonna bring him down, they want to shot down there. Everybody look back to the TV for me, please. And down in front again. Over here. Okay. 
Now, Danny and Sean, can you come down here? They want to shot with you guys lower. And then we'll take a shot over there, you guys. Photogs, we'll get a shot of the landscape. Sorry, Mr. Garcia. Mm. <laughs> Watch your head. TV, you want this? Just look in the back for me at the TV real quick. Everybody down in front, please. Good. I'm just going to raise this. Do what? Okay, go ahead. All right, we'll do a quick photo outside and then come back to the stage for me for the interview. What is up, TBV family? Yes, yes, YouTube has been cutting funding to uh, their channels as of late and with net neutrality uh, going through its process. The internet is changing. If you want to keep your favorite channel intact, coming up with tons of content, and plus get hours and hours of extra content, head over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice uh, to become a member of the TBV family and help support the channel. Peace.